right back at the naturopath. We're still on the topic of omega-3. We're going to talk about the top 10 signs that you may well have an omega-3 deficiency, like millions and millions of people do. So again, these are in no particular order, but I've got 10 things written down here I'm going to elaborate on. So listen carefully, because you may have one or even several of these deficiencies. Quite common. You'd be surprised, especially people sort of 50 plus are going to really relate to some of these. First one, but again, remember in no particular order, I've got eyesight problems. So macular degeneration is the leading cause of blindness globally. Right? But what they discovered through research is people who take omega-3 supplements daily have got a 50% or greater uh, reduced risk of developing macular degeneration. They also found through research that many people with glaucoma, like intraocular pressure problems, uh, have got deficiencies of EPA and uh, DHA. Many people with cataracts have also got omega deficiencies and vitamin C deficiencies. So a very dear friend of mine is a, an optometrist, an ophthalmologist, and we've had many discussions over this, and he entirely agrees that omega-3 is one of the key nutrients for, for the eyes, for improving eye function. Second one is poor immune function. So omega-3 produces uh, these substances called phospholipids, which are, are basically building blocks for what we call eicosanoids. These are hormone-like substances built by your immune system that perform many actions in the body. So when we got poor levels of phospholipids and eicosanoid production, we're going to have all sorts of problems with our immune function. We're going to get increased risk of blood clotting. We're going to get problems with vascular, you know, the blood vessels, the small blood vessels, the bigger ones. Uh, we're going to get many, many different issues with these, these parts of the body. And that's the problem. As soon as you start taking things away, resources from the body, uh, the body starts paying the price, particularly as it gets older. So many aspects of immune function are positively aided with omega-3. And again, a lot of study will back this up. The third one, fatigue, tiredness. Inflammatory cytokines or cell proteins often contribute to feelings of mental and physical fatigue. So when we've got elevated levels of inflammatory markers in the body, uh, people are going to feel tired. Chronic fatigue syndrome patients nearly all show significant deficiencies in the fatty acid EPA. Lots of research, research again has backed this up. So as soon as we start improving the omega-3 blood profile of the person, and we get a more positive immune function response, the patient's going to feel so much more energetic. Look when people get the flu or a cold, how tired they are. So as soon as the immune system gets affected, uh, the person starts getting fatigued. And one of the key drivers behind getting immune function up again is omega-3. The fourth one is memory loss. Placebo-based studies have shown tremendous benefits for those particularly my age plus so remember, the brain is primarily composed of fat, and omega is fat. So as soon as all the cell membranes get plumped up, uh, you're going to get a much better cell-to-cell -cell communication and a better ability for neurotransmitters to really work well in the brain. Meaning the person can think better, they can feel better, they can understand better, their memory is better. Lots of things improve with good neuronal function, particularly aging people. So if you want a good brain, fish oil basically. Number five, poor skin. So omega-3 is responsible again for healthy um, epithelial production of the skin and for plumping out uh, skin, mem you know, the, the membranes of the cells. Many people with psoriasis I've found, with eczema, with acne, with skin conditions, in fact, have got omega-3 deficiencies. People with dandruff, scalp dandruff, omega-3 deficiency, too much omega-6 in the diet, you know, the poor oils, the bad fats, the deep fried stuff, hydrogenated fats so the body will grab omega-6 if there's not enough omega-3 there and that will be more of a pro-inflammatory effect in the body rather than anti-inflammatory effect so if you want good skin fish oil again poor cognition poor learning we just spoke about this before that's number six so the brain can't really work properly in the absence of omega-3 one of the big things that started the omega-3 craze were cognitive studies performed in the UK, I think 10, 15, 20 years ago, not that, not that long ago. Prior to that, um, omega-3 was sort of seen as a kind of hip 
supplement now, it's actually seen as one of the most important dietary supplements you can take. And it's based on the cognitive research that was done. Basically getting a group of people and giving them placebo and another group giving them omega-3 and then tracking these people through several studies. Several studies. So looking how they perform with memory tests and how they perform with other visual tests and learning tests and they found that it was chalk and cheese. The people with the omega-3, uh, you know, particularly the ones who stayed on for six months or more, they just performed superior over the placebo group. And this wasn't one study, this was hundreds of studies that formed a meta study. So if you want good cognition, good learning, fish oil. Number seven, heart disease. Well, I've spoken a lot about heart disease in another video. All aspects of cardiovascular function are improved with omega-3s put in the diet. And we've seen that with Eskimos, Inuits. Uh, we've seen that with, with uh, people in Kenya who drink cow's milk high in omega-3. We've seen that with cultures who consume lots of omega-3 in their diet have got a very low risk of stroke and heart disease, a very low risk of high blood pressure. So, and again, if you wanna have a low risk of heart disease, eat fish regularly in your diet, take fish oil supplements regularly, you'll have a lower blood pressure, you'll have a higher good cholesterol balance, the HDL goes up, the lower density goes down. So studies have found a significant drop with people long-term in the bad markers in terms of inflammation. Now the other thing remember is that fish oil also acts like a blood thinner. So your ability to have uh, TIAs, you know, mini strokes or full blown strokes is greatly diminished. Your ability to block arteries, particularly on the left side of the heart where they commonly occur, is greatly diminished all through omega-3. So heart disease can be another risk factor. Weight gain. Remember fish oil drives metabolic rate up. It's perfect for people with metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome are overweight people, high blood pressure, big belly, wrong kind of food, fatty liver, high cholesterol, uh, poor insulin response. So I've written down here, omega-3 increases metabolic activity of the body cells. So when we drive metabolism up, we also improve the insulin function. So meaning a person's not gonna overeat. The fats also tend to slow the appetite down. So studies have shown people who eat fish regularly several times a week and take supplements that are high in fish oil have got a reduced appetite. They're not going to be looking constantly for carbs and sinful foods to eat. That's why I call it a syndrome, S-I-N. Metabolic syndrome is a sinning syndrome, basically. Number nine, inflammation. Here's the big one. Inflammatory arthritis, right? There was a huge study conducted, a landmark study in 2006 involving 125, I think 130 people. And these people had bad pain, arthritis, and they were no, no doubt taking some type of a non-steroidal drug. So they put this group on fish oil and they had them on there for 75 days. Now after about 60 days, I think two months, um, over half of the 125 participants noted significant reduction in pain, better mobility, joints work better, so if you've got joint pain, you wanna really be thinking about taking omega-3. In fact, 88% of participants in this study stayed with the fish oil when the study was finished because they had so much benefit and no side effects. Unlike, you know, Celebrex or these terrible drugs like ibuprofen, you're not gonna have a problem. Ibuprofen's linked with stroke risk, for example. So be careful. So in any inflammation or pain in the body, think about fish oil. Because this is a key sign I've seen in so many people over the years, is pain. And number 10, depression. Well, it goes again with cognition. So many studies, in fact, have shown that omega-3 supplements work as good as antidepressants. So it's quite depressing why more doctors don't recommend omega-3 supplements to patients with depression over Prozac, over drugs like that, when we know that the benefits of the fish oil significantly outweigh any negatives on them. Some doctors say, my patient can't take fish oil, they're on heart drugs, they're on blood thinners. Well, they actually can. When they know how to take them, they can. And they'll probably end up being off those heart drugs, much to the disgust of the doctor. So think about the omega-3. Think about those signs and symptoms we spoke about. I'll just quickly run through them again. Eyesight problems, poor immune function, tiredness, fatigue, memory loss, poor skin, poor cognition, poor learning, heart disease, weight gain, 
poor you know, increased appetite, infl inflammatory arthritis or pain in the body and depression. You got any of those? Have a think about Omega-3. Thanks for tuning in.